Tim Collins with Coleman Today. I'm out with Corey Harbison. Corey, you have been wearing me out this week as representative. You've been on Farmers, the Drought, Bring, and Hay, Capital Motor for First Responders. And now you're, you're really interested in the Alcohol Beverage Control Board. I have been interested in the ABC board uh, since I served as mayor of Good Hope. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the first the first piece of legislation that I introduced as a new House member was uh, pertaining to the ABC stores uh, across the state. Well, my understanding of, of the issue, and I think it is an issue, is the ABC stores and board control hard liquor sales. It's not free enterprise. It's monopoly. It's not. It's a state... It's a state monopoly on hard liquor in Alabama. Um, and it's not fair to private individuals who take their money and invest in our communities and in, in, in our state. They have unfair advantages. The, the state has unfair advantages over these uh, small small business owners, and it's, it's not fair. Well, let's use a real world example. Here at Good Hope, uh, Captain Beer Beverages, we've got a bottle of Jack Daniels behind your shoulder. Okay. The owner here, he can only buy it from the ABC board. He can't go to a supplier somewhere else in the country or the state. It has to be from That's there, right. right? They're, 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 the state gets the product from the distributor uh, at a, the wholesale rate, and there's somewhere around a 30% markup once the state receives it when they put it on the shelves at the ABC store. Now, when the private store owner wants to get their liquor, they have to go to the ABC store and then they purchase it from the state. If they buy a case of liquor, they receive a 10% discount over what you or I could go in there and buy that liquor for. But if they buy the liquor by the bottle, then they pay the same rate as what you or I would pay. Um, another thing is is the taxes. Um, the, the, the state charges 6% tax on any hard liquor at their stores. That's uh, total out the door. 4% of that goes to the state of Alabama. 2% of that comes back locally. An example here in Good Hope, you've got the state tax, the county tax, the school tax, and then the city tax. So you're at a 8.5% tax rate, and then you've got a 12% city tax on top of that for hard liquor. So, um, you know, that's 20.5% tax that they're having to charge here versus 6%, that's a huge disadvantage. Now, if I'm hearing you right, Corey, what you're saying is the owner of this establishment is basically paying 24 cents out in taxes, and that's the, the his customers are, but that doesn't happen at the ABC store. That is correct, and it's different across the state. Each city has their own city tax. They have the authority to place ordinances and do things uh, to regulate liquor stores, but they do not have the authority to regulate the ABC stores. So, an example, when I was mayor in Good Hope, we drafted an ordinance that if the liquor store had to be so far from a church, a child care facility, or a school, and the liquor store has to be so far from another liquor store. If an ABC store decides to come in to, to Good Hope, um, they, they do not fall under our, our ordinance. They could, they could open up in the same building with a church, or they could open up uh, in the same building with another liquor store. So the state has an unfair advantage because they have exempt themselves from the uh, municipal ordinances that these other privately owned stores have to follow. Well, in this story that you tell me, I knew parts of it, but this is getting deeper. What you're saying, really, is this merchant is at, a, at, a, at least a 30% disadvantage in hard costs at their bank. Uh, I would say that's... I mean, that's, he can't go to a distributor in Kansas and get this stuff cheap. He has to buy that, it. That is correct, and that is another law. That if they bring in liquor from another state, uh, they're going to be fine, and they're going to lose their, their license. Um, and say a, a, a retail store here buys wholesale from the ABC store and the product doesn't move, state law will not allow them to sell their product any cheaper than the ABC stores, so they can't mark that product down to, to move it off the shelves. It's, it really is a, an unfair, it's a racket, and uh, um, I hear the, the, the defense of the ABC board, what they want to say is, well, um, we keep control of the liquor that way. You know, and, and they may be able to keep better control, they may be able to regulate it better, but my theory is if, if they want to do that, the state can buy the liquor, they can, they can do the wholesale distribution. Um, which I don't even like, but it would still be better than them competing against privately owned businesses. Um, you, you look at um, 
the, the incident that, that just happened with uh, the ABC stores hiring a, a, a guy that was uh, uh, had pled guilty for corruption in politics and and he was convicted of a felony, and uh, they've hired him in to be a clerk at one of the stores. And I think that's stirred some people up. But I've been yelling about this for years, and it's well, that was like one of the first things you, That's one of the first things you did as a new legislator, right? It's trying to change this. Absolutely. Um, that didn't go so well, did it? Well, no, I, I could not even get the bill out of committee. We had a public hearing, and uh, of course, the private business owners showed up to uh, lobby for my bill, but the ABC guys showed up to lobby against my bill, and, and I could not even get it out of the committee to the House floor for a, for a debate on the House floor uh, among the House members. It's, it's just it's just unfair, and it, it's sickening to see what the way that the state is, is doing these people. Um, I, I think that it, it needs to change, uh, and, and as I was saying earlier, with the argument that, that they can control the uh, the liquor, that's fine. Do the wholesale rates, but I, I would love to know over the years how many friends of, of legislators or or people across the state uh, that are in positions to to hire these people. How many friends like this they have got the jobs for? And another thing... With that, or without that, them being a felon or that, having... That is, that's correct. Yeah. But another thing that, that nobody's touching uh, much because they don't want to talk about it. Um, I would like to know how many elected officials' friends have buildings that they've leased to these ABC stores. There's a big market in the rental of just the, the buildings where these sites are. Well, yeah. the, the bottom line here issue that you're exposing and bringing out is... The private citizen, the private merchant is having to compete with a quasi-monopoly that has a price advantage, they have a territorial advantage, and a taxation advantage. It, 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 it must be super tough for cabin fever or anybody like this to make a living I selling say so. liquor. So, um, Corey, what's the answer? How does this get fixed? You know, I, I feel that if uh, the state uh, was out of the retail business, we probably would have not had this situation with... Uh, the gentleman that they just hired because there would have not been a store and a place to put him uh, to work. Um, my my ideal situation would be shut him down, get out of the retail business. Corey, well, I'm assuming in the next session that'll be something for you to think about, perhaps work on. I, I look forward to it. Sounds great. Thanks for your time. Thank you.